Are money a part of air, water, fire, earth energy, or are they a separate energy? We have already touched on this subject in the answer to the previous question. Now let's talk about the occult meaning of money. And what do I mean by that? As I've already partially mentioned, it is the reward from the environment. But what exactly is this reward? In order to find this out, we need to understand what money actually is, what the currents of money are, and what their place is in the hierarchy of the world. In our school, we work on this matter in the sixth course of the main department, where we study the currents of forces. We even have separate lessons dedicated specifically to the currents of money. By the way, you can find some of these lessons on our YouTube channel. Be sure to watch them for more detailed information. I think there are several lectures where I've talked about the current of money. So now let me just remind you what it is and don't waste too much time on it. Let's ask our colleagues to display the scheme that shows us how the currents of forces are distributed. Please take a look. At the lowest level of the hierarchy there are two currents, the current of health and the current of money. At the higher level of the hierarchy there are the current of power and the current of fortune. Above them are the current of love and the current of knowledge. And at the top of our hierarchy is the current of creation. This is the hierarchical structure according to which the currents of forces are distributed. Thank you, colleagues. Many of you are already familiar with this scheme and many of you I think will become familiar with it. It can be found in our books, seminars, and YouTube videos. It allows us to see visually how rights, including rights to money, are distributed in this world. And this scheme shows us that health and money are the lowest currents in the hierarchy. And what does it mean that they are the lowest? First of all, it means that in this world these currents are abundant and not as valuable as, for example, the currents that are higher in the hierarchy, because experience and knowledge of the structure of this world tells us that the most scarce resources become the most valuable. And the scarcest resource here is the current of creation. And it is precisely the current of creation that is made up of the elemental forces that we have been talking about and that you mentioned in your question. The current of creation is made up of the elements, and all the other currents that are lower in the hierarchy, the current of love, the current of knowledge, the current of power, the current of fortune, the current of money and the current of health. They are transformed and refracted through the current of creation, and each previous level of the currents of forces generates and modifies the next level of currents. The exception to this is the current of health, which is more associated with the earth element than with the fire element. And the current of money which is closely related to the current of health, and therefore, to the earth element, tends to be more earthly, it tends to be more material. Otherwise, what kind of current of money is it? If you can't touch it, if you can't put it in your stomach, if you can't wear it on your body, it's a very strange current of money. It's not real, it's imaginary. The current of money must be material. So we see that the current of money is a transformed current. It's not a current of pure energy, it's made up of energies, but it is refracted by the currents that are energetically more powerful. Now let's look at another scheme called the Three Circles Scheme. I will ask my colleagues to show it to us. We can very easily apply the same currents, the same scheme that we have just seen, to this classical scheme, the scheme of magical reality building. The current of creation is related to the outer circle, which is associated with the elements and the proto-foundations of light, dark, order and chaos. This is where the currents of creation originate, where the currents of love and knowledge form. The currents of money and health manifest within the inner circle, 
which is limited by the proto-foundations of life, death, love and hate. Accordingly, they are regulated by the second circle, the circle that is related to the egregorial systems. The egregores decide how the current of money is distributed, what is called money today and what will be called money tomorrow. For example, in the century before last, people paid with coins, then they started using banknotes, at the end of the last century they got digital money. And now nobody has any idea what will happen. Some people say that instead of money we will use some kind of individual scores. As we can see, money is going through the process of transformation, it is going through the process of reformation. But we don't care what kind of reformation it will be, as long as the current of money fulfills the very requirement we are talking about, we can put it in our stomach. We can wear it on our body, we can build a house with it. In other words, we can transform it into a more material form than it was before. So we can say that the current of money is a materialized projection of the elemental currents. But it is difficult to understand, it is something incomprehensible, it is something occult. However, it will become clear to us if we understand the following, the material current is given by the surrounding reality. And the egregores watch this process carefully, sometimes even trying to set their conditions, what you have to do to get this current, what you have to do to prove your right to it, but these are nothing more than the whims of the egregores. Because the reality includes the egregores, but it doesn't depend on them. That is to say, reality recognizes the right of the egregorial system to set certain conditions for the use of the currents of money. But it doesn't recognize the right to distribute these currents, it doesn't recognize the right to establish the right to the currents of money. This right is defined by reality itself. And it is defined as the reward you get from the environment. The more forces of chaos in the form of the currents of creation, love and knowledge, these three higher currents, that you are able to bring into the inner circle, the more you will be rewarded by the environment. And it doesn't matter whether you bring these currents through the second circle of the egregorial systems or whether you bring them directly into the inner circle, bypassing the second circle, because there's a law of conservation of energy. And the more you give, the more you get back. So the more novelty you bring into this world, the more this reality will reward you with two lower currents, the current of health and the current of money. And the new element that you bring should not be destructive, it should be creative. And even if it is destructive, because sometimes we have to destroy in order to create, that destruction is specified in a technical task. It will allow you or the members of your clan, your family, your coven, your egregore, whatever, to bring in the necessary creative energies that will be formed as a pure current of creation and this current can manifest either through the energy of love or through the energy of knowledge. The currents of knowledge are the currents that define and structure this world, and the currents of love are the currents that connect the new elements with the existing ones and make them compatible because if you bring something new into this reality, but it's something that is incompatible with the rest of the world, then reality just doesn't know what to do with it. But if you bring something new and you say to reality, look Mother Earth, I am giving you the missing piece of the puzzle, this place will no longer be empty, it will be closed and protected from outside negative influences and this reality will become more whole and complete than it was before. Then, of course, you will get the reward from the environment, you will get the reward in the form that you need, in the form of health, in the form of money, and maybe even in the form of the higher currents like the current of fortune or the current of power, you will certainly be rewarded. This is the occult and magical meaning of how the current of money is formed in our reality, the more you give, the more you will get back. You can ask a completely logical question. What about the fact that our own life experience shows us that there are many people who give nothing to this reality and yet get everything they want, they are literally swimming in money. Yes, these things do happen, and at times it can seem unfair, but nevertheless, nothing ever happens without a reason. 
It could be that these people deserved their wealth in a previous life, it could be that some of their ancestors, not necessarily their parents, took care of them. It could be that their very distant ancestors have done so much for this world that they have received enough resources for themselves, their children and their descendants, or it could be that these ancestors have passed everything on to their future descendants who will live 200 years later. The terms of such agreements may vary, but sometimes lack of understanding makes you think that the world is unfair. Well, yes, this program of reality is imperfect, it has many errors and bugs, and here the ideas of justice and fairness are very specific. But the thing is that it exists according to algorithms that are not always clear to a human being. So if you do not understand something, try to avoid unnecessary conflict with reality. You can insist on your opinion that a person who has received a lot of wealth from reality is not worthy of it. You can prove it to everyone around you. You can create a certain algorithm that says that such a person shouldn't get all his wealth. But you should be able to find a reason in your magical consciousness. Why did reality do this? And this knowledge will shape your personal experience, it will shape your personal magical understanding. It will add another cluster to your causal body in the form of a chain of cause and effect relationships that will act in your mind as knowledge of why it is happening this way. This knowledge will go much further than your short life or the short lives of your ancestors. It will cover the period of 200 years, 300 years, 400 years, and you will see how it has worked in the past, how you can create an inheritance that will be passed on to your descendants in 300 years. The knowledge of how to create such an inheritance is vast, it is almost magical and my advice to you would be to acquire it. Perhaps you will be the first in your family to pass this knowledge on to your descendants, perhaps even on a genetic level. And that is truly what I wish for you.